Good afternoon. I'm thrilled to be here with you. When uh, Norma invited me to to join you all here at the Munster Technology University to be to really celebrate International Women's Day, I was absolutely thrilled, and it's been uh, it really is a great honour, and I'm so excited to share uh, the stage with my esteemed panelists. And um, and I thought what I would do is uh, share with you my journey from Cork to New York and uh, and share with you some of the the lessons that I learned. Um, you know, it was back in 1993 when I graduated from the Munster Technology University today, which was the RTC um, a number of years ago. And, um, you know, at the time when I graduated, there was very few um, jobs available. The economy was not great. And, um, you know, I thought I'd, I just won the lottery ticket um, in uh, so the, the um, US uh, green card. And I thought I'd try my luck and I had an aunt over in New York and um, she was going to let me stay with her for three months. And, and I just thought it would be a great opportunity to do that. I did that in 1996. So <clears throat> I came over and I, I got all dressed up and went down to Wall Street and sat there for an hour and I just savoured every minute of it. The, I just love the energy and the passion and the pace that people were rushing around and you know, uh, coming from Cove, I was quite used to two, kind of two story buildings and it's like skyscrapers everywhere. And I'm sitting right outside the stock exchange. And I just thought, this is it. This is this is my dream. So I need to figure out and I see all these windows and I just need to be like, I just need to get one of these jobs. So um, I started to uh, dial um, the public phone and dial headhunters and um, I did that for the day, for a day. <laughs> I blew through about $50 in, in quarters and um, and I eventually uh, found a headhunter. Um, thankfully, technology has come a long way and we now have LinkedIn and we have emails and uh, you don't really need to go to pay phones anymore. And, um, but they certainly served me well at the time. Um, I went to, I, I managed to secure an interview uh, the, the next day and I went back down to Wall Street um, all ready to go. And I met, um, interviewed a guy and, um, and he's just like, I just don't get it. He's like, you have come out here on a one way ticket with $500 and you think this is all going to work out. And I'm like, sure. I mean, it's definitely naive of me at the time, but I was very optimistic. And he said, look, I've, I just feel bad for you. I'm going to hire you. And I'm like, oh, wonderful. Like, what's the job going to be? And he goes, well, we'll figure that out. Just don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get you set up and we'll, we'll figure out that job. So, um, you know, that next Monday morning I came back and, um, you know, went, uh, and, and started and my goodness, I threw myself into this job. Like I learned, studied everything. I learned so much. I, I worked like till midnight. So I was literally like getting, you know, two days of experience in every one day. Back then it was trendy to work kind of crazy hours. Thank God it's no longer trendy to work those hours and people care about work-life balance these days, thankfully. But um, I studied everything. I studied the markets, I studied the clients, I studied like the like people in leadership positions. And um, I just couldn't get enough. I was like a sponge absorbing absolutely everything. So, and, and I just think you have to continuously invest in yourself and learn right throughout your career. I am constantly learning. And, you know, it's, um, it, there's so much available right now with podcasts and white papers and Harvard Business Studies. And, you know, you can very quickly learn a lot about cryptocurrency and a lot about fintech without um, too, much, too much effort. If you have a computer and a Wi-Fi, really the, the world is your oyster in terms of learning and staying up to speed, especially with technology because things are changing so rapidly. And in particular, the pandemic has accelerated um, the advancement of technology. And I think it's very, very important that we all um, stay ahead of the curve and make sure we know um, what's happening from it from a technology perspective. <laughs> and I was, um, our gas fire uh, went out um, just, just after Christmas in, in, in the den and, um, and then I thought, oh, let me call the guy. And then I remembered, you know, the, the COVID numbers were quite high in New York at the time. So I didn't really want anybody coming into the house and taking the extra risk. So I got on YouTube to see, you know, put in the model number. And, you know, they told me to press this button and that button while I'm touching the pilot um, button and boom, up comes the fire. So <laughs> who would have thought I could spend two minutes on YouTube and learn how to fix a gas fire? So um, everything is possible. <laughs> so please be sure to um, to really invest as much as you possibly can in, in yourself and, um, and and getting up to speed. Um, then I guess, you know, another, another key lesson is networking. You know, I was up for a promotion in Morgan Stanley many, many moons ago to executive director. It was a very, very important promotion for me. And, um, 
I, uh, you know, when I was called in the day before the promotions uh, were announced and they said, you're not going to get promoted this year. I'm like, oh my goodness. I was devastated. This was such an important um, promotion for me. And they said, you did everything right, but not enough people knew you. And, and I'm like, isn't that your problem to my manager? He goes, no, 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 that's your problem. So, you know, I had, you know, to a certain extent, checked my personality at the door each morning and I came and I worked like night and day, but I put myself into a tunnel and I was able to, and I was focused and focused on work, work, work. And I thought if I could outwork everybody else, everything would fall into place. It doesn't. Networking is such an important component. So I am so glad that I did not get promoted that year, as de devastating as it was that, that um, year. I'm so glad I did not get promoted because I just learned so much. It was so important for me to actually learn, um, you know, the importance of networking. So, and you can do that across, If you, you know, you could do it in your current job. You can, as you're actually in meetings, be sure to come a little bit earlier and ask people about their weekends and their lives and really invest in actually getting to know people um, within your job. And if that's not possible, you can do volunteer work across uh, not-for-profits. You could do industry volunteer work and develop relationships and networks through that. Um, you know, LinkedIn is just so powerful. You can connect right across LinkedIn and, and follow up with the people that you go to conferences with. So your network is your net worth. So, um, and then just talking about relationships, I think one of the most important things that can accelerate women's careers is sponsorship. And a lot of people rely on their manager as the single person who can help them. However, as we all know, a lot of managers aren't really great managers and nor are they very good at um, career development, quite frankly. So therefore you cannot, you cannot pin your career on one person. You need to have a whole board of directors. And on that board of directors, you can have mentors and you can have sponsors. Um, mentors are those who help you out, can help you navigate an organization, navigate tricky situations. You know, you can very easily be matched up with someone to mentor you. Um, so, you know, if you do not have a mentor, I would encourage you to go to your manager or um, any other kind of, um, anybody else really in your organization say, hey, listen, it's really important that uh, you'd like to secure a mentor. Can they help you with it? And I, I think, you know, ev everybody should be um, making sure that's happening for everybody across the board. You know, we all need a, a little bit of help with our careers. There's a lot of things that you need to get right with your career in order to be successful. And nobody really can do it on their own. Certainly, there's no CEO sitting in the CEO office without a whole lot of help along the way. So we all need to get a bit more comfortable <clears throat> with asking for help, which is what I did not do for many years of my career. Um, so that's the mentor part. Now, the sponsor. So on your board of directors, you'll have your manager. You should have your a few mentors. You could have a mentor to help you with career in general, getting to the next level. You can have a mentor to help you from a technology te um, tech perspective. You can have a um, and then a sponsor. So a sponsor is somebody who's really going to pound the table for you. And, you know, the best way for me to describe my um, understanding of sponsorship is I was on the um, MD promotion board a number of years ago and um, we had uh, five of us had got, got started <clears throat> and Mary came up uh, on the list to see if we would promote her to managing director. And there was a big debate and Mary was a very technical person, but really not very dynamic. And we all agreed that this was not her year and that she would need to work on a few other things and then she will get promoted. John came into that room 10 minutes late and we were halfway through the list and John said, what about Mary? Um, and we said, no, 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 we talked about Mary. And then John started, Mary is the best that I've seen. Mary is technical. She does not need to be dynamic. Mary, <laughs> he pounded the table for her until we put Mary back on the list. And I sat back in my chair and I just thought, wow, that's sponsorship. That's somebody taking a risk on somebody else. That's somebody investing in somebody else. That's somebody taking their name and putting it next to somebody's reputation. Um, we all, like we all need somebody like John. And and John was doing all of this without Mary knowing, but Mary had earned this, right? Mary clearly had showcased her great skills, and John clearly picked up on that, and he went to bat for her. So that's that's sponsorship, and and I think in order to accelerate women's careers, we need more sponsors. So. Um, you know, talk to your manager. It's not. It's, it's hard to just kind of say, hey, will you be my sponsor? You Somebody really needs to see you in action. And, you know, if you'd like someone to be your sponsor, then you need to make sure you're connecting in and making sure that you're showcasing all the great work that you're actually doing. 
Um, so moving on from, you know, the, the networking relationships, uh, sponsorship, mentorship, um, I'd like to talk about perception and brand. So this is such an important component and we, a lot of us forget to spend time on our brand and, and our, how we're perceived and perception is reality. So for the first 10 years in my career, um, I would not, uh, you know, I, I would get feedback each year and I would listen to the feedback and then it would come to the negative feedback and, um, and then I would be like, oh, no, that makes no sense. And I, I used to barely even listen to it. I was like, no, 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 they don't know what they're talking about. Until I really realized that I actually need to listen to this and I need to pay attention and I need to write down every single word on that feedback and I then need to commit to myself that I'm never getting that feedback again. And a lot of people kind of misunderstand that if somebody has a certain perception of you, then that's it, you're locked in. And that's not the case. You can go and manage that, but you have you actually have to know how do you wanna be perceived first so that when you go into all of these meetings, you need to know that, hey, I want to be perceived as someone who's very technical, who's somebody who's passionate about getting things done and someone who gets things done and maybe being strategic. So what are those few things that you want to be known for? So you have to get that right first. And once you have that written down on a note in your phone where you can access that at any point, um, then you can actually really start to, to um, make progress. And, you know, if someone's saying that you're not very strategic and uh, that's the feedback that you're getting, you know, for the next few months, you need to say, hey, listen, I'd li like to better understand that because I want to make sure that that decision is consistent with our strategy because, you know, I'm very strategic and I'm very focused on that. If you tell people enough times that you're very strategic, then they're going to start thinking that you're very strategic. Right? So sometimes you just need to tell people what you want them to hear. So perception is reality and you can change people's perception of you. So that's your power. So make sure you're leveraging your power um, from that perspective. Um, I then want to talk about maybe diversity and um, and how important diversity is. And and I'll have to take you back to my um, early days on Wall Street. So uh, that first day, that guy who interviewed me, God, he's getting a lot of coverage today. <laughs> that first guy who interviewed me uh, tapped me on the shoulder and said, and you know, this suit that, that you're wearing, you know, most people wear black suits and white shirts. So you might want to, you know, do that. And I'm like, oh my goodness, thank you so much. Thank you. I was so green. I took advice I, from anyone that would give me advice. I was, I, I would take that advice. So I ran off to Macy's on my next paycheck and bought five of the cheapest black suits and sparkly white shirts that you could possibly find. <clears throat> and I dressed up in black suits and white shirts for the next two years. Um, now, when he said that to me that first day, I looked around and I'm like, oh my God, everyone's wearing a black suit, dark navy suit or charcoal gray suit. So I'm like, wow, he's right. Every single person is. Two years later, um, this, this black suit business didn't really quite sit with me. Um, and by the way, I wasn't wearing like a big red dress or an orange suit or anything that you know, I might wear today. But I was wearing like a beautiful olive uh, green suit, which is actually tailor made by um, um, Taylor and Cove, Mrs. Childs. Before I left for America, <laughs> she made two suits. And um, uh, and so it was a beautiful olive green, green suit. And... Um, and, and after two years, I realized, I'm like, yeah, they're all, he's right. They're all wearing black suits and white shirts, but they're all men. So he basically had said, he basically said to me that I need to dress like a man in order to be successful. And I'm like, after two years, I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not going to fit into the mold to be successful. We need to break those molds. And every person needs to get a voice at the table because I sat in meeting after meeting as the only woman in a very male dominated world for like two, the first two years of my, of my career here in, in, in New York on Wall Street. And, um, and you know, my voice was not heard. And, and that's where I saw that this is unacceptable and that every single voice at the table must be heard and everybody needs to take their seat at the table. That's why it's on all of us that we need to make sure that we are taking that seat. So what's interesting is that I've worked on diversity and promoting diversity for many, many, many years. And I, sometimes I feel like we just, we're not making enough progress and we're not really moving the needle significantly. I think now is different. I think it's time. And I think there's an enormous amount of senior roles right across the globe where which must be filled by diverse employees. And um, so there's a lot, there's huge potential and we need to make sure that we're, we're, we're leveraging that and that we're taking advantage and making sure that we're getting into those seats. So we need to look at our careers. We need to look at where do we wanna go? And we need to think about how we're gonna get there. And we need to have open and honest conversations about 
what do I need to get to where I want to get to? And is there a skill that I'm missing? Is there some extra experience that I'm missing? Um, and we need to be very honest about that. And, you know, in certain situations, we may need mobility. We may need to move to a different role to get the required experience to be able to take that seat. So um, there's, it's, I think now is the time. And I think there's just an incredible momentum at this point. And, um, and I think we, we all need to make sure we put our step forward and lean in and make sure this happens. Now, if you're in a position, a decision-making um, chair, then I think it's on all of us to really focus on intentional leadership and making sure that we're looking at diversity because our firms need to start looking like our client base. Um, it, I, I think it's time up, time is up. We, we really need to start making far better progress here. So if you're sitting in a decision-making um, role, you know, how, what are you doing to make sure that those from diverse backgrounds are getting opportunities, are getting stretch assignments, are given opportunities to uh, move into a different role so that they can actually progress quicker in their career? I think we all need to look at, look at ourselves and, and make sure that we're challenging ourselves. And on this International Women's Day, choose to challenge. I'm choosing to challenge myself on ensuring that those with diverse backgrounds are getting the opportunities that they deserve and they're getting their stretch assignments um, that they deserve so that we can help accelerate um, their careers. So I, I think now is the time. I think it's, um, it's really important that um, we are doing that. So from an individual perspective, I think individuals need to take ownership of their career. Stop waiting for everybody else to do it. This is on you. Your career is most important to you and you need to get your career plan together. You've got plans for everything else. Get your career plan together and, and figure out what is it that you need in order to make the progress that you really want to make. So, um, and, and to the leaders, you know, when you invest in others, you amplify yourself and you amplify, amplify the impact of yourself. So um, go out there and invest in others. It's just like so rewarding. And, um, and it just pays dividends to those who, can, um, who are going to receive, um, you know, the, the impact of, of what you're doing. So um, it's, it's investing in others, I think, is just huge. And, and I think we're all responsible for doing that. And then finally, I'd just like to leave you with a point on um, enjoy it. Enjoy the journey. Don't get too um, wrapped up on trying to get there and head down. That Enjoy it. Enjoy the meetings. Enjoy the relationships. There's a hundred things that can get me down on a daily basis. Each email coming in, right? I'm like, oh. but I, I love it. I love it. And you can accomplish great things when you're passionate about what you're doing. Um, so I would say just be passionate about what you're doing. Enjoy it. Um, positivity is a force multiplier. Um, and, and if you don't love it, then, you know, what can you love? What do you love? And, and try to do that because life's too short. Um, so uh, anyway, so I'll leave you on that point. Positivity is a force multiplier. And when you invest in others, you amplify your impact. And I wish you all a very happy International Women's Day. Thank you.